So whether you from uh, South Wales or whether you're up in uh, Manchester, wherever you are, uh, welcome to this service. So today, uh, Alan Maunder will be preaching. Uh, I'm Reverend Sue, uh, you all know, know me by now. Uh, I'll be presiding. Uh, Angela will be leading the responses. So we start with our congregational hymn led by Chris Purgis. Then cause is a kaleli Africa, Maru paka ma fondo eo, Iva imitanda zoe tu, Uzi si kalele, Uzi si kalele. Gila moya, gila moya, gila moya. Oh, inquire, uzi si kalele, uzi si kalele. Uh, thank you, Chris. That was absolutely wonderful. So we come with those wonderful, uh, you know, words in, in our hearts and mind. And on the weekly sheet, you have got the uh, translation. So we come to God now in worship. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of Christ. We say, together at home, joining with Angela, Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have a moment of stillness to come to God, to confess to him where we have grieved him, disappointed him, and ask for his forgiveness. We say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <coughs> the College for Today, Bible Sunday. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures 
to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh. The first reading is from, yeah. So uh, um, yeah, there we go. The first reading is from the book of Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and all those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. The scribe Israel stood on the wooden platform that had been made for the purpose. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Israel, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy, do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, and to send portions, and to make great rejoicing, because they understood that the words declared to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God. Now, uh, Kate, Kate Tobin isn't here, so can I just spring this on uh, Chris Perkis? To, to read the uh, second reading. Thank you, Chris. I know you'll do it. <laughs> I'll to unmute. Unmute, Chris. I'll to unmute. Done, yes. The second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Hallelujah. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, 
the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. And the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very great gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we hand over to Caroline for a few moments as she speaks to us about the Diocese of the High Veld. The companion link with the Diocese of the High Veld was formed on the 19th of October 2003 and we've just entered the 18th year of its existence. Our parish link with All Souls Benoni has been quite successful due largely to the support of our parishioners and those of All Souls. It has been good to have Stevie Ancient, their link representative, join us most Sundays on our Zoom services. You've read them in the magazine of the work carried out from All Souls to help the vast number of less fortunate people living in and near their community. However, today I'd like to talk about the region of Mayflower, a township approximately four hours drive from St Dunstan's Cathedral in Benoni and close to the Swaziland border. There is very little infrastructure in Mayflower. One clinic serves a population of approximately 100,000 people. There are four primary schools, two high schools, three preschool facilities, and a safe park, which is run from All Souls Church. Safe parks open at the end of the state school day to offer protection from abuse to vulnerable children and to give them help with homework and the opportunity to play in a safe environment. The nearest hospital is 72 kilometers away at Ermelo. Mayflower is therefore quite an isolated position. With the lack of medical facilities, people in the community are trained as home-based carers. Their training involves basic first aid and bereavement counseling, as the incidence of HIV AIDS is very high. These people visit homes in their community and the hills surrounding Swaziland, offering whatever help they can. They deal with death on a regular basis. The Mayflower Early Years Day Care Centre was opened on the site of All Souls Church Mayflower in 2003 and 20 children attended. As numbers needing this facility grew, a school was built next to the church. The base for a home was put down before funding ran out and costs rose. We visited in September 2017 and met many of the delightful children being taught in quite cramped conditions as the school now caters for around 120 children. The garden project provides vegetables for the children attending the creche who for many reasons would otherwise lack good nutrition and balanced meals. Some seedlings are sold to the community for their own gardens, and that income sustains the food garden with seeds. During our visit, the watering system, as you can see, was haphazard and the tunnels were in a state of disrepair. Plans were in place to complete the church hall and provide much needed facilities. And following our visit, and one made earlier by Bishop Richard, he decided that his Lent appeal would be to raise money to complete the hall and improve the irrigation system in the garden. Thanks to all the parishes in Monmouth, a cheque for the sum of £20,000 was presented to Bishop Charles when he visited in August 2018, and work began later that year. In a message recorded for Link Sunday today, Father Ruben Similani, the incumbent of All Souls Mayflower, says what the completion of this building has meant to Mayflower. This building has added value to our ministry of compassion and social responsibility as we continue to witness to Christ in Mayflower and the surrounding area. The Diocese of Monmouth has offered a helping hand 
to enable us to reach out to the desperate and needy. As it says in James 2, verses 14 to 16, What use is it for a man to say he has faith when he does nothing to show it? Suppose a brother or a sister is in rags with not enough food for the day, and one of you says, Good luck to you, keep yourself warm and have plenty to eat, but does nothing to supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? <laughs> Though with faith, if it does not lead to action, it is in itself a lifeless thing. Father Rubin continues by outlining the resources in the new hall. It consists of two classroom areas, toilets, a kitchen and an office. The home-based carers use the office as a centre to plan their work. As well as the preschool, the hall is used by the Safe Park, who formerly met in the church itself. The community also uses the hall for various events. It is an exceedingly beneficial hub for the isolated community of Mayflower. A new irrigation system has been installed and this upgrade has resulted in a large volume of what <laughs> Father Rubin describes as quality vegetables being produced, enabling the children attending the creche and safe park to be fed nutritious meals at very little cost. Father Rubin concludes by thanking the people of the Diocese of Monmouth for their kindness and love and with the prayer that the link will get stronger and stronger. And before I pass over to Reverend Allen, I, I just, as it, be, as it is Bible Sunday, I'll just share a piece of information that might help in a quiz at some point. South Africa has 11 official languages, with Zulu and Soto being the most popular. I should, I, I have no chance to attempt to say some of the other names. I should have asked Rona. All have been translated into the Bible, thanks to the Bible Society. And a piece of information I didn't know is that the South African branch of which is based in Kempton Park, near St Dunstan's Cathedral in the High Felt. Thank you very much. Oh, th thank you so much, Caroline. We'll talk a little bit after the service and um, Perhaps can ask you a few questions. So, so Alan, uh, over to you now. Hi, thank you very much, Caroline. Thanks, Sue. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want to start uh, this morning by um, reminding you of some words of Saint Paul, a quotation from the Epistle: "Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly." But really, I want to start with a question, and it's this. How can we know anything about God? After all, God is invisible to our usual senses. God is certainly mysterious. God is quite elusive. And God often seems hidden from us. And if God is infinite, as we believe him to be, how can we possibly grasp anything about him at all with our puny human minds? For as we read in the prophecy of Isaiah, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Now, there are some people who say that we can't know anything about God, that God is so far above us that we can't really know anything about him. Now, these people are not atheists. They believe that God exists okay, but they say that he is essentially unknowable. You can say what God is not, for instance. He's not a slug or a caterpillar or a human being or anything like that. But you cannot really say anything positive about what he is or what he is like. And such people are content to remain with the mystery of God. But are they right? Is God unknowable, as they say? Actually, I have some sympathy with their point of view, for surely there must always be an element of mystery about God. We can't possibly know everything there is to know about him. If we did, if we could possibly grasp him with our human minds, then surely he wouldn't be God. And so I think that there will always be an element of mystery. But unknowable? Well, surely that is not right. Perhaps as things stand with our human abilities, we could know nothing about him. If it was just us here on earth trying to penetrate the mystery of heaven, then perhaps we wouldn't get very far. But we believe that we have a God who has revealed himself to us in ways that we can understand with our finite human minds. Now in theology, we have a word for it. It's revelation. 
not to be confused with the book of Revelation that we find at the end of the scriptures, but Revelation, God revealing himself to us. Theologians recognize uh, basically two types of revelation. The first is called general revelation. We have a good example of that in Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. For those with eyes to see the world that we live in, the universe that we inhabit, the very fact of life itself shows the hand of a creator God. We might well look at a red kite soaring majestically above us. We gaze into the night sky when it is cold and frosty with a sense of awe. We see the colourful beauty of wildflowers. We ponder the intricate, almost impossibly complex workings of living things. And for those with eyes to see, that is sufficient to reveal the hand of God at work. Surely he is a creator. And so we can immediately see that God is creative. So there are things that we can say about God after all. But God hasn't just left it there. There is another kind of revelation that theologians call special revelation. God has revealed himself to us through his dealings with us human beings. Sometimes by calling people to follow him, as when he called Abraham to leave his own city of earth to a new land, sometimes through a burning bush in a desert that caused Moses to realize that he was standing on holy ground in the, pres in the presence of God Almighty, sometimes through giving a way for his people to live, as with the Ten Commandments on the top of Mount Sinai, sometimes by delivering his people at times of great danger, as when, for instance, the Egyptians came calling, sometimes by setting his people free from captivity, as at the time of the Exodus or the exile, sometimes through the words of the prophets who spoke God's word to God's people. God has constantly revealed himself to us, those with eyes to see, that is. But most of all, he has revealed himself through his son. As we read in the letter to the <coughs> Hebrews, long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son. God himself through his son came to be with us for a little while, to be born as one of us, to live as one of us, to die for us, and to be raised again on the third day. And so, if we want to know what God is like, he is most fully revealed to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. So we can know what God is like. Actually, we can know quite a bit about what God is like. We can look at Jesus, and he reveals us to us, him to us, for God is Christ-like. Of course, that leads our thoughts on to the Bible, the Bible that is sometimes called the Word of God. In its pages, we find distilled the human experience of the divine in our midst. For what is the Bible if it is not the record of God's dealing with us human beings? And so on this Bible Sunday, we are reminded of the importance of the scriptures to us Christians. Yes, to some extent, we can understand something of God through general revelation, through contemplation of the world around us. Yes, we can understand something of God through our own experience of him in our lives, and that's important too. But the Bible adds greatly to our understanding of God. For the Bible is a treasure trove of the human experience of God over a period of history of some 3,000 years, experience that far exceeds our own. And we can learn much and deepen our faith through the experience of others. And in its pages, we find there the story of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, who is the ultimate revelation of God. As St. Paul tells us, he is the image of the invisible God. So how can we know anything about God? Well, most profoundly by looking at Jesus, who is revealed to us in the pages of the Bible. And so we can see that on any level, the Bible is important for us. We are not people of the book in the way that Jews or Muslims are. For them, the revelation is the book, the record of his very words. But for us Christians, the deepest revelation will always be Jesus. But the book is of the utmost importance. That's why we have Bible readings in our services. And that's why we have a special day thinking about it on this Bible Sunday.
And so I want to return to where we started with that quotation from St. Paul, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now the question for us this morning is this, do we let that word dwell in us richly? When we have the readings in our services, do we listen carefully or do we let our minds wander? Do we ever reflect upon the readings and ponder the deep things of God? Or do we let the words go in one ear and out the other? Do we have our own Bibles at home? And if we do, do we ever open them? The Bible is one of the means of grace that God has given to us. And if we let its words dwell within us richly, then we shall deepen our faith and grow in our love for our Lord Jesus Christ. And so on this Bible Sunday, I say it again, let the words of Christ dwell within us richly. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Alan, for that wonderful uh, opening to us of revelation and the different types of revelation. And, and the call for us all to, to go richly and dig into uh, the scriptures because that's where we learn about our Saviour. And in learning about our Saviour, we become more like him. So we'll take a moment just, just for some of those words that Alan has said to, to, to sink into our hearts and minds. And then we will say the creed together. So we say the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lead us in, that you will lead us in our prayer. Thank you. Let us pray for the church and for our world. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for your church in our two dashes of Mormon and the High Belt. We give thanks for all who have faithfully witnessed to the spread of the gospel in both of these parts of your kingdom throughout the ages. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you have poured into both of these places, especially for the blessing of friendship, which we share in and celebrate today. In these strange and uncertain times, when life as we know it has changed with the coming of the pandemic, we hold fast to those things which never change, faith, hope, and love. We pray for both of our communities as we seek a way through the murky waters we find ourselves in. Be with Bishop Cherry and Bishop Charles and fill them with your Holy Spirit that we may guide and lead us 
ever closer to you. Open the hearts of all the faithful that we may seek to love you in the service of our lives. Teach us, Lord, to hear your voice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your creation groans under the strain of global warming and the human influence. Move our hearts to help make the world whole again. From the tiniest and the most fragile flower of the Sugarloaf Mountain to the biggest and the most majestic elephant walking across the high belt, we see your creative hand at work. We pray for all who are in possessions of power and influence for President Cyril Ramaphosa and Her Majesty the Queen, and all who exercise leadership globally, nationally, and locally. May they bring about change to aid the healing of our world. Open the hearts of all the faithful that we may seek to serve you in the healing of our planet. Teach us, Lord, to hear your voice. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray, loving God, for our local communities and especially for those who are struggling during this time of pandemic. We remember those who have lost their income, their dignity, or their means of living. Help us to reach out to them, responding to their need and thereby demonstrating your divine love. We pray particularly for the elderly, those who live amongst those who live alone, and for any who may feel isolated at this time. Give us gentleness to embrace all amongst whom we live so that together we may build up the common good. Open the hearts of all the faithful that we may seek to show you in our dealings with others. Teach us, Lord, to hear your voice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our Lord Jesus, walk among the sick and heal them. Be with the sick and the hospitalized, and those who live with constant pain or disability. We pray for the doctors, nurses, therapists, and carers. Fill them with your strength and guide them in their dealings with those in their care. Open our eyes to the suffering around us and move our hearts to make a difference in the world. Give to each, your, give to each of us an understanding of your nearness, especially when we realize the brokenness of our lives. Open the hearts of all the faithful that, that we may seek to hear you in the business of our lives. Teach us, Lord, to hear your voice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we think of all who have lost their lives during this time. And at this moment, we especially remember your very faithful servant, Lionel Watkins, who passed away this very week. We praise you that through the love of Jesus, our Savior, death is not the end. We pray for all who mourn and ask for your peace and lighten their darkness of our loss. Enable all who love and serve you to hold fast to the faith that nothing can separate us from your love. May we follow the examples of the saints of every age and in every place, and walk confidently in the path that leads to your light and our eternal home. Open the hearts of all the faithful that we may seek to hold you in darkness of our lives. Teach us, Lord, to hear your voice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we continue our journey together, we lift up to you the companion link we share in this part of your world vineyard. Our prayer is that you may continue to strengthen our love for one another through our parishes, our projects, 
and our doubts. Give us a fresh vision that we may hold, may be bold in our journey of hope and light secure the knowledge that we seek to do your will and to glorify your holy name. We commend ourselves and all people to your love and care. Merciful Father, accept this prayers prayer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you draw and welcome us, empty to pride and hungry for your grace, to this your kingdom's feast. Nowhere can we find the food for which our souls cry out, but here, Lord, at your table. Invigorate and nourish us, good Lord, that in and through this bread and wine, your love may meet us and your life complete us in the power and glory of your kingdom. Amen. Uh, thank you for the, those prayers, uh, Julio, and, uh, uh, and as we gather now around the sacrament, uh, we come to the peace. Jesus said, Peace I bequeath to you, my own peace I give you. Peace that the world cannot give, this is my gift to you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. So, time for a little wave. <laughs> So we come to the sacrament. We celebrate together the gifts and the grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal will. Through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. You sent him to be our saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross he opened wide his arms of mercy and embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever more praise in you and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving. This bread, this cup, your gift to us, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. School him with him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, we boldly pray in our mother tongue. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, as, as we all know, uh, those of you at home who want to receive uh, the, the bread and the wine, please do so. For those uh, who don't, uh, it's still a spiritual communion. And uh, so we now take a moment to receive the sacrament. So we come to the words of the sending out. Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. Gracious God, your son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weaknesses sustain us by your true and living bread, which is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We say together, generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen.
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Now, as this service comes to an end, uh, I'll just blow the candle uh, to, to signify that the service is closed.